Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we're going back to Heroes and Heretics to have another look at one of their new releases. Now, I will say at the top of the show, these guys sent me this bottle, but as always, especially when I'm covering things like this and other, other bottles that I get from various sources, I'll always be completely honest about where the bottles come from, and you can always trust that my opinions are going to be completely free of any external forces whatsoever. Let's get into the actual bottle and see what we've got. And today you might notice a little bit of a label that we've seen a couple of times before on our channel, and that's this uh, Heroes and Heretics Smoke and Glory brand name. Now this is actually the third release in that kind of little mini series. The first one I covered years ago, and it was a Lechig 13 year old. This one's a 12 year old. Then we had a uh, Crofton Gia, which was lovely. I've still got that one knocking around on the shelf. Unfortunately, the first one went pretty quickly. You know, we're talking, it was nearly three years ago that I covered that whiskey, so that weren't gonna be hanging around because that was one of my favorite whiskies that year. This one then, again, is their third release in their Smoke and Glory range, and it's a, as I said, electric 12-year-old. So, difference in age, you know, we're losing a year, I guess, if you can kind of see it like that, but it's obviously a completely different barrel. You know, these things are, uh, are natural colored, non-chill filtered, single cask offerings. Uh, it's not cask strength, but it is 50.3%, 50, which is pretty good. And this one comes in at 80 pounds as well. The uh, the first one, the electric 13 year old, that came in at 100 pounds. So if you're looking at a bit of verses on that, uh, that one was excellent value, I thought, but then this one coming in at 80 quid is even better value. Now this one here, the other difference between the two as well is that the old one was an ex-bourbon cask and this one is a sherry butt. Now we can see in those 12 years, the color, it, I mean, I'd have been forgiven for thinking that was an ex-bourbon in, in terms of color. So, you know, it, I can't see it having too much influence on it, but we'll check that out when we get into it actually itself. Now, obviously these guys give us a lot, a lot of information. There's a lot of information on the label that we can go through, but I think we should just get into it and see what we've actually got in the glass, right? Now, one thing I can talk about is the color. Again, I said it's kind of, yeah, it's quite light. It's quite straw in color which um, surprises me given it's a, a, a sherry cask influence, but who knows, it's just what it is, right? And you know me, typically I don't vibe off of uh, sherry cask anythings. Um, you know, that's not to say that's the exclusive rule, but usually I don't, but um, when it's involved with peat, something sings in my opinion, but let's get onto the nose and see what we've got then. Now for me, it's a, uh, it's a sweet smoke, it's a sweet peat, it's... There's some kind of like, you know, there's normal kind of vanilla -y notes going on, but... It isn't a kind of dirty, earthy peat like the old one was, or like you might be used to with uh, Lecce, but that's that's interesting to me. One of the things that it, you do get is that kind of like that sea air vibe, that kind of brininess from it. That's coming through in spades, without a doubt. So, on the nose, it's like... It's like Lecce, but not quite as you already know it. Let's get onto the palette. Mm. Okay. This is where it gets interesting. So, oh, it's, it's unlike any electric I've ever tried before, but it's beautiful. It's, um, okay, so uh, it starts out quite sweet. Uh, you're getting some of those sweet fruits coming through that they're not overpowering at all. I've put them down as a little bit of dates, a little bit of raisins, that sort of thing. But when I'm saying those things, it's not like it's that's the that's the forefront. I mean, it's literally split seconds at the front before the kind of smoke starts wafting in, and we're getting that kind of smoky peatiness, that standing next to a campfire on the on the beach vibes that that Lechik always gives me anyway, um, and that's kind of rolling over with a bit of kind of like white pepper and things like that. So for me, the sherry cast doesn't seem to be like holding too much influence over it and that can only really be a good thing for me you know I, I like I've, i like some really really heavy like px and peat mixed in together uh, and generally speaking that's kind of it when it comes to sherry cask stuff um, but this i mean I, to be honest with you if i didn't know it was sherry cask i wouldn't have guessed that at all i'd have been this is expert for sure but there's obviously something fruity about it that i would have been confused about where that came from so good to know that it's on there, but yeah, if you're worried about the sherry vibes on this at all, it's really, really, really understated. I'm probably only picking them up because I can see the words on the label. It's um, There is definitely something about it though that, that kind of differentiates it from normal lechig, let's say, normal lechig. Finish then is kind of long, it's sweet, it's smoky. It's, 
it's it's really just like like having a dram uh, next to the beach, and I've kind of likened it to that kind of mouth feel that you get when you're smoking a really excellent cigar. Um, not something I do much more these days anyway, but if you're a cigar smoker, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You get that kind of like, it just mingles, right? It just mingles and hangs around and gives you that kind of like tobacco-y, leathery notes that um, that you that you get from, from smoking a cigar. And that's what I'm getting off of this. So I'll have one more little sip. Mm. Now, I'm vibing off this entirely. Absolutely love this stuff. I, um, I really like electric whiskey anyway. Um, Generally speaking, like everything that H and uh, HAH put out, because they're, as I always say, they're releasing really excellent single cask stuff. Um, so I'm happy to be working with them in any capacity. Uh, and that brings me on to the price, of course, which I mentioned earlier, which is 80 quid off their website. Um, I think if you're a member of their collective, you can get free delivery on that, but don't quote me on that. You'll have to go and check out um, and yeah, see what they've got. One thing they did do for me today is um, give me a 10% discount code for you guys. So if you are interested in this, there's a link below. Full disclosure, that's an affiliate link as well. So not only will you get your 10% off, but I'll get a small little bonus for it as well. So it's well worth doing if you're interested. Support the channel, support yourself, all that kind of things. But for me, I mean, what's this? How many bottles are this? 600 bottles. It'll be gone pretty quickly, I think, just like all the rest of their smoking glories are. Uh, they've been doing wonderful stuff with this series in particular. All of their series really like the Falls of Caledonia. That's that was just an absolute blinding whiskey. But for me, with my kind of like affinity for peat, I've been looking at these smoking glories. Absolutely love what they're doing with that. But yeah, if you're interested, go and check out the links below. You can get involved if you want. If not, all good. Hopefully you've liked the video. Hit a thumbs up if you have, and I'll see you again on more whiskey videos in the future.